Hi, my name is Jared and this is my last lecture project. Before we begin, I would like to talk a little about myself. I am definitely an animal person. The white cat right there is named Louie and the black one is Twilight. I also have two kittens. This kitten right here is Rio and the other one is named Snowball. Now I'm not some crazy cat lady. I prefer dogs over cats like the dog in the beginning is named Shep. My family likes cats more than dogs, so we have more cats. I was born on May 24, 2000 in Fullerton, California. The May 25th is a mistake. My mom liked the scrapbook, write down all my features that I was when I was born. But I was born on May 24th, not 25th. That's a mistake. As a baby, I came like a month early. I was due like end of, end of June, early August, but I came in like end of May, and that really worried the doctors that I came so early. So I had to stay in the hospital for a little while, but I was fine, nothing happened. And my parents really liked this baby because I always had a big smile on my face and my friend, my family loved to take pictures of. And I was very peaceful and wasn't like a big crying baby. Chapter 1 I compare myself to a thinking cloud, mainly because my mind is always full of ideas. I'll be on one subject, but in my mind I'll be on something completely different. And clouds like bubbles are like easy to pop or like clouds disperse. And if you just ask me, I'm, I will just tell you what's in my mind and what I'm thinking. And like clouds, like trees, just kind of like go with the wind and just go with the flow, which is what I like to do, is just follow everyone else pretty much. Chapter 4. My parents are definitely different. My dad is focused on being prepared for an emergency, which is to him the apocalypse. Whatever type of apocalypse we have, he wants to be ready for it. Our garage is full of medical, food, and water supplies. It's like Costco. You have to go in sideways, get through the aisles, just because it's so tight. My dad is definitely a paranoid old man that thinks everyone but close family and friends are bad. He wants to move to Utah. He's all isolated alone, which is which is family pretty much, and doesn't want to deal with anyone in the world or worry about anything. My mom, on the other hand, is overprotective as she went to junior high with me. I'm sure many of you know my mom if you went to Walker or Lexington for junior high. This was a tough time for me since everyone saw me as her son and nobody saw me for me. I got made fun of a lot fought for it, but also everyone knew me. And this was a tough time, but I got past it. Chapter 7 Growing up, I always wanted to be Spider-Man. At my old, old house, my whole entire room was Spider-Man. My mom and I painted my room as like New York City at night, and above my bed, above me was Spider-Man, like I was watching over me while I was asleep. I had Spider-Man sheets, Spider-Man pillows, costumes, I was everything Spider-Man. But as I got, got older, I realized that wasn't gonna happen, and I had plenty of animals growing up, from like my family and my other family members and close friends. So I really got custom animals and always want to be a veterinarian to save animals and help animals. But one of my other genes that got shut down was to become a firefighter. Because my uncle Tim and other family members were firefighters before him. And I always felt like firefighting was in my blood. I love to wear firefighter costumes and like saving people from like a fire like this. Like who doesn't want to be, be a firefighter? That was so cool. Chapter 11. For me, happy places on earth isn't a specific place. It's who I'm with. When I'm with like friends and family, like people like my friend Philip here or Alex or my best friend Zach I've known my whole entire life. Every time I'm with them, I'm always happy. It's always like every single time I go somewhere with them, it's like it's like a happy place for me. And they're like brothers to me and I would like do anything for them. Like every time I'm with them, I'm always happy, it's always exciting, it's always fun, it's always laughter, no problems, just straight up jokes, messing around, doing whatever. And for me, happy places are whenever I'm with them or wherever I make it. Chapter 21. My most adventure person in my life will be my big sister. Even though we're nine years apart, she's always been there for me. We get along very well. I'm very close with my sister. We can tell each other anything and be free of judgment. Like me and my brother are complete polar opposites. We don't get along at all. 
we try, but it really doesn't work out with my sister. Anything just clicks, and she's always telling me, giving me advice in life because she made she made mistakes too, and I learned from and she told me to learn from her mistakes and listen to her. Chapter twenty four. I haven't really made any big mistakes in my life. But like one big mistake that stuck with me was that I was in Oregon staying with family, and there was this hiking trail up the mountain. I really wanted to go see the view. So I just left where everyone was asleep, didn't take my phone, and it was like a hour hike both both ways. And my parents and family got really worried that something happened to me, and I learned that always tell someone where you're going, and, and if you can, travel with friends. My brother and I don't get along at all, and he's very sensitive, so like some things I can say is like a joke, but it takes the wrong way. And so I've really learned to like watch your tone and watch what you say and how you say it, that really affects people and how they look on you if you think it's a joke or not you mean serious chapter 28 i don't see it also dream killers i mainly see them as being realistic and doing what's best for you even if you don't realize it adults are older and see mistakes made mistakes and know know what they're talking about most of the time but my, oh, my uncle right here he definitely isn't a dream killer. He's really supportive of what are my decisions and what I want to be. He always tells me what needs to be done. And my dad's saying like, oh, you're actually going to do it. And like trying to do a constructive criticism. So I don't see that all the time as being a dream killer. I see them trying to like help you and motivate you to do certain things and accomplish better. So I don't see my dream killer. I see them as being realistic and helpful and supportive. Chapter 53. When I was younger, my friends from elementary school just convinced me to join their soccer ball team with them. But it was hard for me since my dad had back injuries, my brother was just lazy. So I never really had like a adult figure teaching me how to catch and all that. So I had to learn from my coaches and other players and I was really bad at it. You can ask Wally, he was on the team. You can tell you that I was not good at it. But like throughout the year, I kept practicing, even though I wanted to give it up. I was tired of running and just want to be lazy. I didn't give up, and eventually I got better and better at it, and I achieved my goal. Chapter 56. Definitely when I was a kid, I was always a tiger. I always had a big smile on my face. My parents loved my huge smile. I always, I always gave them. But as I got older and more stresses came on and the world hit you, I became more of an Eeyore. But... As I saw that, I really didn't like it. I started to become more of like a Tigger, but then like some days I'll be a Tigger or an Eeyore. It really all depends on like what's going on in my life. Like nothing's going on, I'll be a Tigger. I'll be happy, everything's fine. So it really depends on my mood. Chapter 61. If I were to give any last advice to someone, it would to be love and cherish your family, make good friends, and to live life with no regrets. Your family is always gonna be there supporting you, no matter what happens in your life, they'll always be loving you, and you should love them back. Because they support you, you support them. You only get one family. So, my friend Zach has been there with me since day one. He's the biggest influence in my life. He's like a brother to me. I said pick good friends because like, they help me make better choices. He's always stood by me. In the end, you only get chances we didn't take. One of my favorite quotes. If you don't seize an opportunity, you might regret it, so always say, live with no regrets and live in the moment.